Huge news in the hurling world as Liam Cahill decides to stay on with Waterford for another 12 months with an, an option of a further 12 months again and, in, and has decided um, to not take up the role as Tipperary Senior Hurling Manager, despite being a native of the county, Ballangarry native, of course, who has managed the Tipperary Minors, Under-21s and Under-20s to all Ireland glory in the last five years, has had two excellent years with Waterford, goes taking those players to... Uh, to all an All Ireland final, Munster final, and back to an All Ireland semi final again. He has decided to stay there along with Mikey Beavins. But the story has just come in today in the middle of the hurling show. We weren't fully uh, sure of all the details while we were live on the show, but haven't had a chance to look at it afterwards. We can d delve into the details a little bit more. So when you do watch the clip from the hurling show, just know that we weren't sure if it was for twelve months or for a little bit longer as we spoke at the time. But the the story came out in Tipperary Live. Ie a little bit earlier on, and it was a statement from Cal, which read like uh, as follows. Since the Tipperary hurling manager's role became vacant almost two weeks ago, there has been widespread speculation surrounding my position. I've been the central focus for much of this speculation, Cahill adds, and he, um, so I think the time now is appropriate for me to clarify my position and allow both Tipperary and Watford County Boards move ahead with their plans for next year. So he goes, uh, to, to ever be associated with the position of Tipperary Senior Hurling Manager is a huge honour and I'm extremely grateful to the County Board for their recent approaches in this regard. We have discussed various matters and I can honestly say that making this decision has been the most difficult one that I've ever uh, had to make in recent years. Tipperary Hurling has always been a huge part of my life and it will always remain a core part of my being. I've spent several years working with underage players in Tipperary and we had some incredible moments together which have left us memories that will last a lifetime. The quality of those players is exceptional and I've no doubt that many of them will eventually leave a mark at senior level. However, all major decisions involve a balancing and weighing of many factors before coming to a final conclusion. The position of the Tipperary Senior Hurling Manager is extremely attractive and one that I did not take lightly. Mikey Beavens and I felt duty-bound to give careful consideration to Watford after their response to us in the past two years. Since accepting the Watford invitation to manage their senior hurling team two years ago, the support we've received has been remarkable. The Waterford County Board has been unstinting in its backing for everything we did. The reaction of the players, even when the difficult decisions has to be made, had to be made, was exemplary. Their dedication and loyalty left a deep impression on both of us, for whom loyalty is paramount. In the circumstances, we feel that to step aside now from the Waterford journey would be the wrong decision. And for that reason, we will be staying with Waterford Senior Hurling Team for the coming year. I fully understand this decision will please some, but deeply disappoint many others. I've never made any, a secret of my desire to one day manage my native county, and that ambition remains intact. We would be hopeful that this opportunity would present itself again in the future when the timing is right. For now, my commitment is to the Watford Senior Hurling Team, where Mikey Beavens and I feel we have a sense of unfinished business. We made significant progress in the past two years, but we feel that there's still more to come from this incredible bunch of players. Finally, I would like to wish the new Tipperary Senior Hurling Manager the very best of luck in his new endeavours. So that is the statement that came out from uh, Liam Cahill himself and Mikey Beavins, they are staying with Waterford. Tipperary, the search for a manager goes on now. So um, I'll put you now into the, the Hurling show where myself and Michael Verney had a chat. Uh, not all the details, as, as I've just read out there, were available. So this is just the sort of instant reaction. And a reminder that in order to help the channel grow, if you could click, if you're on YouTube, the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner, turn on the notifications if you would like updates of when videos come out. But it helps the channel grow because YouTube sees more people following it and it uh, recommends it to others. So really would appreciate if you could do that because it is free. And then also consider the Patreon. So it's patreon.com forward slash our game. You get all the audio podcasts in there. So that's a really good option. And again, a great way to support the channel. So here's our thoughts, our further thoughts. Uh, myself and Michael Verney talk about Liam Cahill's decision we have a bit of breaking news, and that's that um, apparently it's been reported Michael Moynihan is, is tweeting about it, a uh, journalist with the Examiner, that Liam Cahill is staying with Waterford. Whoa. Whoa. You can imagine how buzzing I am with that. Jeez, that's massive news. Massive news with massive consequences. Um, I, had, I had heard yesterday... Uh, from you know, from Waterford sources that he had contacted some of the Waterford players in recent weeks and about being, being back training in November, be ready to come back training in November. But uh, I did, I yeah, listen, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But 
the um, there must have been a good counter offer from Waterford and the fact that of the work that he's done in Waterford and what he's building. But Jesus, right, right, okay, that that's Have, a game changer. That is huge. That is that would be a gut punch to the supporters of Tipperary because they would have felt that this was a done deal. In you know in the in you know if you look at it, obviously the underage success, minor All Ireland, under twenty one All Ireland, under twenty All Ireland went and had really promised in two years. This is assuming that this this is exactly how the story pans out now. Had a really good two years at Watford, and you're thinking, right, this guy is as road tested as can be, knows every hurler in Tipperary, will just step in now and uh, guide Tipperary through the sort of semi-transitional uh, period that is there. I think tip supporters are going to be very, very upset with this because in many respects, it was just a case of, like, this guy obviously loves Tipperary, we, we saw how he reacted to Watford beating Tipperary. It, you know, he didn't like necessarily being in that position, I would imagine, of beating his home county. And now you've got, like, it just seemed like this was kind of written in, in the stars, that it was like Liam is coming home, that kind of thing. But now you've got to wonder how did this break down? Because Tipperary did speak to him last week. And you would have imagined, as long as the offer that's on the table and in terms of, you know, what resources he's going to be given this year and so on and so forth. And the amount of commute he's even going to save himself and Mikey Beavens, the, the size of the commute, everything just seemed to suggest this is more or less just set in stone. How on earth has this been messed up is the question. Now, maybe it's a case that Cal just decided, OK, this isn't for me. But if that's the case, I would have thought that he was going to be looking to take this job. And it was just a case of Let's just not mess this up and make sure the offer that we make to him, that he's happy with that. I would see this as a massive faux pas if, um, unless he just decided himself that, that he wasn't going to take it. But otherwise, this is a massive mess up. Yeah, we obviously don't know exactly what's happened uh, in the background in, in Tipperary um, and what the nature of the conversations were, which took place last week, I believe. And now... <laughs> Now it just throws up. It's so interesting. Like who will actually manage Tipperary next year? Um, I, I, yeah, it's 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 a huge it's a huge one for Walford. I have to say it's a massive one for them. They would be seen by many as the one team that could potentially take down Limerick um, and have maybe the style that could take down Limerick. And maybe we'll learn from their lessons of this year, trying to take them on physically, and maybe we'll try and take them on a bit more pace-wise and try to move the ball a bit quicker uh, if they play them next year. But it's a huge uh, it's a huge statement from Cahill of what, where he thinks Waterford can go. On the flip side of that, it's just a massive, uh, it's a massive kick in the stomach for Tipperary supporters. And I would say Tipper, the Tipperary squad as well at the moment. But yeah. listen, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll go and try. I'm sure they're, they're already moving to try and get the next best man in place. Yeah, well, uh, John Fogarty of the Examiner is uh, tweeting some quotes from Liam Cal. I under I fully understand that this decision will please some, but deeply disappoint many others. The position of the Tipperary senior hurling manager is extremely attractive, and one it did not take lightly. Mikey Bevens and I felt duty bound to give careful consideration to Watford after their, resp their response to us in the past two years. So he's obviously like they obviously did have that discussion with Tipperary and. Um, Wow, I mean, I'm pretty stunned. I'm sure you can kind of get that from my tone or mm. from my tone. Can I just say, um, Cal is obviously, um, and I, and I knew this anyway, but he's seriously a man of honor, right? By all accounts, I'd say he had told the the Waterford guys that he would love to stay building and move on from what they've done and get to the next level. And even though I would say the job that he always wanted was on his table. He obviously felt duty bound to stay with Waterford and push on to another level with the team that he has built from the ground. So, yeah, like that. That's imagine what the Waterford, the Waterford lads must be bouncing. They must be bouncing to think that this guy is basically, you know, a tip man who always wanted the tip job has given uh, his faith in us and left his faith in us. It's a massive, uh, massive, massive confidence boost for them, I'd imagine. What does that say about Tipperary? Does it, like, I mean, look, maybe he was offered a job given a great deal and he decided not to. Maybe it was a thing where the wrong thing was said or he didn't feel like he would have had the full backing. But what does it say about Tipperary? So, as Brian White says here, what a brave and right decision by Cal. If he wins an All-Ireland with Watford, it would be more, worth more than three with Tip. Oh, I don't know about that. 
Liam Cattle would love to win a, an All Ireland with Tipperary more than anything else. I'd say it's just um, circumstances probably dictate the fact that he just they obviously have invested an awful lot in Waterford um, yeah. and um, emotionally and uh, time wise everything, and they obviously feel that they have more to give and that, that the management team have more to give them as well. So, um, what does it say about Tip? I don't think it paints too favourably on Tip. I think it will. I think it would be fair to say, to be honest with you. Um, and it looks like there's a massive transition going to happen there, and the person needing that transition needs to be the right person. We thought Cattle was the right person. Um, by all like everything suggested that he would have been the right person. So hard to know what direction they turn now. Mm, I wonder if some of it, the snow been late 2018, and you know that would have left a sour taste in his mouth. And I, I, I wonder. I just wonder if the wrong thing was said. Is it kind of like, well, look, after what happened late 2018 when I got snubbed, he'd done, you know, he'd won, he'd won what he'd won with Tipperary underage. Did he just get a vibe? But and maybe he's just like it's such a sweet situation with Watford in terms of like I'm loved down there. It's moving in the right direction. This team's hitting its peak right now. But I mean, this is the thing now. This could rule him out being Tipperary manager forever, forever more for not taking it when it was there. Yeah, it could do. Yeah, um, and you do. Uh, as we've said on previous shows, you don't know uh, when this will come up again. You just you just don't know. Um, so it's a really, really brave call, I have to say, because you can imagine how, how much the the heartstrings were pulling at him to go back to Tipperary. Um, it's a very, it's a very, very, um, very brave call because so much like this is your this is would have been everything would have been saying to follow his you know his heart. And he's followed, I'd, I'd imagine he's followed his head, which is a very, very difficult thing to do when the ties of home come into it. So just, you know, fair, fair play to him in, in many ways. But from a tip point of view, I'd imagine the wind has been taken out of your sails and it's going to be interesting to see uh, what direction you go now. Really, really interesting. Yeah, you're kind of marvelling at it to some degree. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not marvelling at it. I'm, not, I'm sure... The alternatives, the alternatives in tip are are still very strong. That is to assume that they will stay inside tip. I'd imagine they will. Obviously, uh, Willie Maher was one of the one of the lads who was very high in the equation before Liam Sheedy got the job. Him and Liam Cal. So it'd be interesting to see whether they go back that direction or not. But yeah, it's going to be in- really interesting to see how it plays out. Mm. Walford must be dancing though. They have to be dancing. It, this is. This is some confirmation of his belief in that squad. Yeah, and like you know, Willie Maher's based in Bennett's Bridge, so he, like, he's probably equidistant. I mean, what I'm sure Wexford have been on to him as well, so he's kind of equidistant between the two places. So I'm sure he's in the conversation for both now. Brendan Cummins, maybe you know, if you were going to go for somebody who's you know so well respected around Tipperary, obviously you know him well enough from uh, dealing with him in the independent. That obviously Dara Egan will be in the conversation, maybe Darren Gleeson also. There are guys there, but it's just because the whole county was thinking, let's get Cahill, let's get Cahill, let's get Cahill. Whoever does take over now at this point, it's a, it's almost like they're starting behind the eight ball because they're not Cahill. Is it fair to say this is a twist that we just didn't see the managerial merry-go-round taken? I, I'm stunned. I, I'm stunned. I think yeah. it's so obvious that I'm stunned here. Do you yeah, know what? Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't agree that Cahill... Will will never manage Tip now. I I don't I do I don't I don't agree with that. He was he was with a team. It's not as if he was free. He's with a team. He the things happen might have happened, but in the background where his like his two year deal is up or whatever. But like he may have committed already to staying with Waterford. Because when he when you know Liam Sheedy was still Tipperary manager while Cattle was in Waterford, they, there may already have been a commitment made there. And he may have felt like that commitment couldn't be broken. I do not agree that he can never take the Tipperary job. I, I don't think that, like, fair enough, under the current Tip regime who have offered him this job, would they go back to him again in two years? Possibly not. But regimes change. Um, I, I think Liam Cattle will definitely manage Tip. Don't tell me that he won't manage Tip. Of course he will. Yeah, but it won't be because of his CV that he won't. It's just like noses can go out of joint. And the, the wave of goodwill that's behind him now Let's say he manages for Waterford for the next three years. And obviously, best to look to him. You know, he's, he's doing really well. But let's say they have some fractious matches with Tipperary in the next couple of years. Like, there's going to be a little bit of ire in the stands now. And 
obviously player there'll be far more supporters in the stands next summer can you imagine the john that's going to be happening in his direction and standing <laughs> on the sideline if he comes out at Semple stadium out under the tunnel do you yeah, know, like the, no, it's pretty obvious yeah. the things that are going to be said straight away and imagine three years of that and then he's supposed to sh and let's say he has those fractious games and then he comes back and he takes over Tipperary, then perhaps he's behind the eight ball because the goodwill isn't there the way it would have been right now. Yeah, as as Waterford manager now, uh, like the, for the previous two years, he, he did have the support of Tipperary people, whereas he probably will not have a lot of that now. But I think those things are quickly forgotten when, when, t when time moves on a bit. And yet there probably will be uh, fractious, different things will happen against Tip. Uh, that That's only natural, but... Uh, I think it would be very short-sighted of uh, tip folk, particularly tip top brass, not to not to realise that you know in, he might he mightn't feel he's the best man for the job now, or he might feel he's best suited somewhere else. But that will change quickly in a couple of years, I'd imagine, and it will all be forgotten if he manages tip in five years' time and they win something. It like that they, they won't even be mentioned. I just think it's um it's a twist uh it's a twist that I definitely didn't see um. Yeah, mm. this kind of merry-go-round taken. You see, you probably think we've short memories in Tipperary, you know, and uh, <laughs> you know that won't be for, it won't be forgotten. And I mean, I think he's like I've interviewed him before. It's on the Our Game channel there from from a while back. Like he, he's a gent to deal with, a gent to talk to, but like that sort of stuff, just it won't be forgotten easily. Uh, I just look at a couple more of the comments here. Patrick Hickey says, public slap in the face to the Tip County board. Uh, I presume this is another Clare man here, Michal McCarthy. If Brian Lowen can manage Clare and we know about his relationship with the Fitzgeralds, then surely it's possible for Cal to manage Tip in the future. A very, very fair point. And obviously a bit of sneering going on here with, um, there was a little sneery comment here somewhere about Davy Fitz for Tipperary. Dreams do come true. Hashtag Honda Premier. That's definitely sneery. Connor says, "What about the full forward line? We'll come back to the full forward yeah. line. They're all star team in a second. I, I, I love, I love how how you're basically admitting that like Tipperary folk are some of the bitterest uh, folk out there with the shortest memories. We sure are. <laughs> at, le at, le at least you've admitted it anyway. No, GA folk are. Come on, we all are. We're all a little bit like that. Um, Colin Bonner uh, won the, with Ballyhale and WIT. Surely has a role in Tipperary Hurling. Very, very fair point as well. I've also interviewed him. Involved with Dixborough at the moment as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me just see now. Uh, his term was up at Watford and he snubbed his, his own county, says Park Gill. Who would want someone like that again? Tipperary aren't going to be cuckolded. And are the All-Stars only 12 players now? Bad <laughs> and Davy for tips, says Joe Murray. People are looking to wind me up. And by God, it's working. Anyway, we get back to this All-Star team. What on earth were we talking about there? And does it even matter anymore? Uh, we were talking about how um, the number 12 spot on the All-Star team, even though you have, have it written in and we're not happy with it. Um, I know, we had... We had Look, that's the least of our it. issues. That is the least of our issues at this stage. I'd say I could get anybody into this All-Star 15 now at this stage. I'd say I could nearly be corner forward on it. I'd say you'll just wave the white flag at this stage. You're that deflated. <laughs> Look, tip or tip, and tip will be back next year. Look, can we agree on that? Yeah, I, I I tell you what, I can't wait to see what I can't wait to see who's going to take over now. Um, yeah, yeah, because because names in the Tipperary backroom team have been linked with other counties, and now it just yeah, it's going to be. It's I didn't think the merry-go-round could get more interesting, but it just has. Yeah, things have just kicked on to the next level. So what about Jack O'Connor? We talked about him before. Actually, Watford have confirmed a twelve-month term with Liam Cahill. That's been confirmed now. So it's not a three-year deal; it's a twelve-month term. Forget about the All-Star team for a second. But 12 yeah, months, that, that's interesting. That, because, you know, where does that leave anybody? Where does that leave Liam Cahill? Like, I mean, where does that leave Waterford? You're, you're just talking about a rolling one-year deal. I mean, Tipperary are going to get a manager in and they're not going to install him for 12 months. So, yeah. you know, I mean, that's, that's John that's, Fogarty tweeting that now. That's, uh, that's an interesting one, yeah. Maybe Liam knows something that we don't and Tipperary are going to have an interim manager for a year, and then Liam is going to take over for the 2023 season. I don't know. That's that's a strange one now. Like, does uh, like does he think he can get it done in one year? Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one now. I would would have thought it was for minimum two, more than likely three. 
Yeah, look, there's there's possibly an option of another as well. We'll see how that plays out, but that certainly is a little wrinkle that I definitely wasn't expecting. There's a lot in a succession of things I wasn't expecting. That's definitely high up, well, in the list anyway. Yeah. If you enjoyed this piece of content, please follow us on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the page, which helps the channel grow. And if you want audio podcasts, go to patreon.com forward slash our game.